Hello everyone. Happy Monday and welcome to Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy. I finally feel like I know what day it is, kind of, um, because it's Monday and Claire went to school and I'm here chatting with all of you guys. Um, I did not get on on Friday um, and I miss you guys, uh, but I also didn't even remember it until Saturday and was like, wait, what day is it? Because the last like five days have been a blur of I don't know what day it is. So yes, it was crazy, but it was wonderful. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving and ate plenty of food. Um, and, and yeah, it was really nice. We spent some time outside and went to the park and things like that. So uh, it was good family time spent together. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And um, and do share. Let me know what your favorite part of Thanksgiving was this year. Today, I'm actually going to play around with various forms of coloring tools. So um, I actually had a question from Denise. So thank you, Denise, for that. Um, and she asked if Stampin' Blends were hard. And that's kind of a tricky question. So I thought I would play with various coloring tools to share them, show them off, and let you guys know uh, what they are, how they're used, tips and tricks. Um, and then maybe you can determine whether it's hard or it's easy. Uh, I do think that each one has a uh, learning curve or a tryout period. Um, and, and I'll kind of go through some of the the difficultness with each one as I go along um, and let you know like what I think, you know, you need to play with a little bit more, a little bit less, or start with this one and move up to that one um, and that sort of thing. So first things first though, I definitely wanted to share with you guys um, about Stampin' Bingo. So virtual Stampin' Bingo is December 18th. And I will say that I'm going to start sending out packets on December 7th, which is like seven days away. How crazy is that? And the deadline to get signed up is December 9th. So you definitely don't want to miss out on, um, on that deadline. Of course, your packet will come with everything that you need to play bingo, as well as lots of other goodies and all the supplies to make these four cards. So there's these two and these two. So you'll have different patterns of the designer series paper in your packet. Um, but you can make them just like this, or you can use those pieces to make the card completely different. That's all up to you. There will be a stamp along after the games of bingo that you can join in on, or you can do these on your own because it will come with instructions and everything too. So here's the samples. Here's one of the gifts that will be coming. Um, and that is a package of the playing with patterns resin dots. And you can use a few on these cards or you can always just use them on other projects. So you can see I used, um, on these cards I used just a few but I still have plenty more to play with. So there's a link in the description box so that you guys can um, click on that, fill out the survey and, um, and then you'll be all registered and ready to go. So don't forget to do that because the deadline to get signed up is coming up very quickly. I can't believe tomorrow is already December 1st. Like crazy, absolutely crazy. Okay, so here are our coloring tools. <clears throat> and I actually might grab another piece for some of these. So I'm just using just regular Whisper White. Um, I will say some of them work a lot better with Thick Whisper White or the shimmery white because it is a thicker cardstock. So it does better whenever there's more water involved. So one of the first things that I wanted, and if you guys have any questions on these or have a question on something that I'm not showing, then definitely give me a shout out. I'll try to keep my comments um, up and scrolling so that I can see them all. Yes, I will get um, that link sent to you, Laura, and um, and thank you for getting all registered. So yes, I actually haven't looked as of um, this morning, so I will get that sent out to you. Okay, so these are just regular Stampin' Write markers. 
There is a um, marker tip as well as a pen tip. So here's the marker tip and here's the pen tip. So you can see, you know, this one is more for like, I mean, I wouldn't really like color with this because you would sit there forever coloring um, and it's very streaky. I would use that, like I typically use this for either very, very small things or I use it for writing, just like writing in a card that I want a red color versus, you know, a pen that I might have. The marker tip while you can, you know, go in big swatches, you will notice that you can see some of the streaks. And you will also want to be gentle because the more you press on it, the more you lose that tip of the marker. And then it just kind of becomes like a shredded mess. Um, and then it's hard to get into small little grooves. Like for example, if I were to, you know, have a flower that is the worst flower ever, and that's why I stamp and I don't draw, you know, you would want to be able to go around the edge like this. But if you had like a really gnarly tip where it was all smashed and everything else, then you wouldn't be able to do that. And you would almost have to use the other tip, but I'll show you that using the other tip you definitely have to use a lot more strokes to be able to fill in because it is so thin. So there I'll show that. One of the other things that I've always had people ask me questions on, and this goes with the Stampin' Write markers as well as the Stampin' Blends, but this one has a skinny line and this end has a fat line. So this one is the fine tip and this one is the marker tip. So if you ever, well, and of course there's also the little picture too, but if you're ever like pulling it off and you're like every single time I pull off the wrong one first, you can always kind of glance at that because it goes all the way around. Whereas this, you have to kind of rotate it around to find it. So the, um, the line on this end is thinner because this is the fine tip and the line on this end is thicker because this is the marker tip. So there is markers, stamp and write markers. This is the old style, like, you know, the markers that have been out for like ever. Okay, next I wanna go to stamp and blends. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I'm really confusing you guys. Next, I want to go to blender pens, which is what these are. These are blender pens, and they are like a clear marker. So as you can see, there's two ends. These ends are both the same. They're both like a, um, a brush tip on both ends, and you can see that they are both clear. Now, I will show you this is a brand new one which is why it's still perfectly clear. This one is a well-loved one, um, but it's still clear, or should be. See? Still a clear marker. Even though the tip is, um, is stained, it's still a clear marker. So what you'll do with this is you can blend colors. You can also make it any color of marker that you want. So a couple ways to do that. Some people like to press the ink pad into the lid, but one of the things, oh, the squeaky. The one thing that I like to do, because I like to keep it nice and clean, is to just take one of my clear blocks, doesn't matter what size, and press it into it, and now I have a little color palette. So now I can just take my marker, I'll take the brand new one, so you guys can see. You can see that it's clear and I'm just going to pick up just a little bit and color. So
So this would be excellent to do. I mean, you can do a lot of different coloring with this. But like if you just wanted to do, I don't know, you did, um, and then when you're done, run it clean and see how it's clean now. But you can also see that it's permanently stained pink. So I kind of try to stick to certain colors. But if you wanted to stamp this cute little donkey and leave the donkey in black and white or whatever. You know, you stamped him in black on white cardstock, but you wanted to color in just that flower, you could always use your Stampin' Blends and you could then color it in any color that you have an ink pad for. So that's one of the cool things. You can get all of the Stampin' Write markers or you can have all the ink pads and get a Stampin' Blends marker a blender pen. Jeez, I'm messing up the names like crazy today. A blender pen, and then you have every marker you possibly want. And you can also use shading of it. Because, like, I could pull some of this to the side and get a lighter shade. And just keep going. Until I get that perfect... See how now it's, like, a lot lighter? And again, clean it off until it runs um, clear, and then you're good to go. So this is a blender pen. These are Stampin' Write markers. So blend or Stampin' Write markers, and then the pink over here is a blender pen, where you can pick up ink from any ink pad and color with it. So that is blender pens. Those, I also will say that you can use those on any kind of cardstock. Um, this next one is actually one that I would, I almost would want you to master the blender pens before moving up to the water painters. Um, the old style was called aqua painters. Um, these are very similar. It's just the tips are different and things. So these are the new aqua painters, which actually I don't even have water in these just yet. So like the old style of aqua painters were like this and they just have like that brush tip. It's like a whole bunch of fine little um, hairs, I guess you would say. And there's water in this tube, which it also is perfect for sealing envelopes on cards, especially during Christmas time. So the new set though has different styles of brushes, which is super awesome. Hopefully I remember which one's which. So you can see that there's a fine tip one, a thicker tip one, and then there's like a um, a flat like paintbrush style one. And again, these all just have water in them. So unscrew the cap if I can. Oh, maybe if I unscrewed it in the right direction, that would work. And then you just fill it with water. Uh, there are some techniques out there where you can put bleach in them and bleach out cardstock. Uh, bleach scares me, so I don't typically do that and love my customers to death. But if it scares me, I'm scared to have them use it too, uh, especially at my house. Maybe we could do it at someone else's. Um, but yeah, there's lots of other techniques that you could put alcohol in these, um, bleach, water. You can even put reinker and alcohol in there and then you have that same color if you're doing a whole bunch. But like I said, I would almost um, recommend mastering the blender pen before moving up to this because a lot of the problems that I find people have with these is too much water pools. And then they just have this pond of water and it's an absolute hot mess. So let me actually go fill these um, with water and show you how they work. I would show you with the aqua painters, but I'm kind of interested and want to play with these new tips. So hold on just a second. Okay. I think these screw on opposite of what is normal. And that's why I'm having such a hard time. Isn't it like righty tighty lefty loosey? Although I never really understood that because it's like turn to the right. How does that work? That's to the left. So, but I think these are opposite. 
So if anybody has the new water painters, let me know if you find them to be the opposite of what they're supposed to be. Or maybe you're supposed to unscrew the lid upside down or something. I don't know. So right now it's dry. And I'm just like, and it says right here, push. So I'm just going to squeeze ever so gently. You can see that the water is coming through. See right there as I push. And then maybe a little more. This is usually just the first time you use it because otherwise, there we go. Okay, so see how it's all wet? Maybe you can see that on my hand. Maybe not. And this one. Whoop, there we go. And this way, you'll do very similar to how I did with the blender pens, but there's a lot more water. So this is almost like having a cup of water and a paintbrush all in one tool. So again, I'm going to pick up my color and paint it on. You can also get a lot more shading with this because you can squeeze more water to make it like thin out. Like I could even squeeze water right onto this color palette. And now I just took my like bright pink to a light pink. But you will notice that if I keep going here, my cardstock is getting wet and it's starting to like bow and get really soft. So if you're really coloring because you got a lot of flowers and you're, you know, really wanting to get that shadow and the shading, then you can really saturate your cardstock and kind of make it into a hot mess. The other thing is, is the more you push, the more it's going to let out more water. So if you're pushing really hard to try to really get it colored, you're really just adding more and more and more water. And again, if it's a small image, go with the small tip. Yeah, this one's going to be really wet. And then this one can really get water going. And again, with these, you'll just kind of squeeze them a little and clean off the tip. And it might be still stained a little pink. Certain colors tend to stain a lot more than others. And there you go. It's all clean. And now you can switch to another color. There's still a, a very light hint of pink in there. But using things like um, Whisper White or a very vanilla thick cardstock or using shimmery white cardstock, which is a little bit thicker. Um, it, and of course, watercolor paper. You can always use that. Um, I find watercolor paper to be too textured. And sometimes it looks vanilla-y. And if I want a white image, then I don't really like it. But that's personal preference. Yeah, this one's quite stained because you can see that it is run clean and like I can see water there, but yet it's pink, but that's okay. Let me show you an old aqua painter. Like see that one's fairly clean. And I've had my aqua painters for years. See how that one's kind of like blue, black, dark, whatever you wanna call that. And then this one but they all have water in them. Like I said, I grab them to seal envelopes all the time because there's just water in it. And then I'm not licking it and getting that gross taste in my mouth. I'm not spreading germs and I'm not getting paper cuts on my tongue. But you could do the same with um, the new water painters too. So a great way to color and blend. I'm not gonna get super deep into like blending and shading and shadowing with these as much um, because I'll be honest, I really don't feel like an artist when it comes to that and I have no clue what I'm doing um, or how to get that with watercolor because I don't know, I just didn't get that gene. Now, my mom's dad, um, he was a complete artist and there's pictures all over um, my house that he has painted. He did charcoal, watercolor, like 
water pencils, like everything. Um, so this is like a little bit of that. Hopefully he's proud of me for this. Um, but I definitely don't feel like an artist um, to be able to do a lot of shadowing. And, you know, they say like, where's the light coming in? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Where is the light coming in? You tell me. Um, so I'm not really the best with that. So now I'm going to show you guys Stampin' Blends markers. So these come in a pack of light and dark. They also come in a pack um, that has the double tip. So there's the marker tip. So you can see the wide line and the um, marker tip. And then the thin line and the pen tip. So they're dual tipped and then dual colored. So you can see that this one is Magenta Madness Dark and this one is Magenta Madness Light. And you can see them labeled there, but you can also tell that they're just a hint lighter. Some of them look like very different and some of them you're like, which one's the light? Which one's the dark? And I'll be honest, sometimes I use like Magenta Madness Light and Rococo Rose Dark as my two shades. So you can kind of work with your colors a little bit more um, and play with that. So I'm going to show you Magenta Madness. And like people also always ask me which tip I use. And I don't really have advice for that either. It's whichever one you feel comfortable with. So of course, this is the, um, the marker tip. And see how that color is just so much more smooth um, because it's alcohol and not um, not water like this. So you can see this one's the Stampin' Write marker. This one is the Stampin' Blends marker. So red is the regular marker and the pink is the Stampin' Blends alcohol marker. Expensive for how the watercolor paper. Yeah, I don't know. I just find it to be so thick. It's too thick. Like I'm willing to risk it with regular cardstock, thick whisper white or um, or shimmery white than to use watercolor paper. But like that's just me. It also comes in like a weird size. So like I tend to use a chunk of it and then have a whole bunch of like leftover little strips. And like since I don't use it a lot anyway, I feel like it's wasteful. So, um, so yeah, I think I would probably agree with you, um, Casey, that like just the size and, um, the way that I use it, it, I don't like to get it out. I tend to just wing it with regular cardstock, um, or the thick or the shimmery white, um, which shimmery white is one of those that you're like, I didn't even notice it. And then all of a sudden you're like, Ooh, I noticed it now. And then it's super fun. Okay, so that is the fat tip. Here is the pen tip. You can also see that the pen tip of this one is a little bit pennier. <laughs> That's not a word. Um, is a little bit of a thicker pen tip than the Stampin' Write marker because I was able to do all of that whereas I was able to do that. Um, so you can see it's a little bit thicker. Um, I used to always use the pen tip. I just felt like I had more control and I could get into small spaces and that's what I used all the time. And then now I almost always use the marker tip. And again, if you don't press hard on the marker tip, then you have, you almost have more of a fine tip than you do with the other one. So you can really get into small spaces and do, you know, like a fine little area by just very lightly touching the cardstock. And I don't know what I'm creating there except for a random oblong shape. Or an eyeball with an eye eyebrow up top or something. I don't know. <laughs> so the other thing about this is with the light and the dark, then you can do shading and shadowing and things like that. So this is where I actually feel like Stampin' Blends make me feel more like an artist than anything else does. But I need the help of my stamps. So I pulled out some nice like line art stamps and I'm gonna stamp a few of those for you. So when you're using the Stampin' Blends, 
You can use any color of ink, like any of your regular ink pads. I tend to like to use uh, basic gray because I like that like more subtle outline than that bold, strong outline. So I'm gonna show you this flower in basic gray, but you can also use a color too. You could stamp it in magenta madness and then fill in with magenta madness. This flower is from the Floral Essence stamp set. So I'm using that line art one and I'll tell you why. If you do wanna use a black ink, you'll want to use your Memento ink. Memento is used for the alcohol markers and Stazon is used for watercoloring. One of the other things that I wanna say is that when you're done with the alcohol marker, you definitely wanna put the cap back on because if you've ever played like, okay, so water, I could put a dab of water right here and it's gonna sit there until this video is done. If I put a dab of rubbing alcohol right there, it would evaporate immediately like hand sanitizers and things like that do. I'm gonna do this just to make sure I don't get something wet in the meantime. Um, trust me, it would still be there though. If I put some rubbing alcohol there, then it would evaporate and be gone. So just think about that with your two markers. If I left this marker uncapped, it would stay wet longer, but I still wouldn't recommend it, um, than one of the alcohol markers, which is also why there's a strong snap to that, whereas this one, eh, there's kind of a strong snap. But it's to be able to keep the, um, the color and the moisture and everything in. Okay, so there's my basic gray and my memento black. And at first, I'm gonna close that before bad things happen, like an arm goes in it. At first you can always just color with your Stampin' Blends markers. You can just color like you normally would with um, a regular Stampin' Write marker and then you just don't have to worry about all of those um, those like swish marks. So one of the other things that I wanna say is because it's alcohol, it bleeds out. So you don't wanna go like specifically to the edge because you're gonna have a little bit of bleed and then it's gonna go over the edge and you're gonna say, well, why does it look like I didn't color in the lines? Cause you just need to go close to the edge whoops and um and then the bleed will take it the rest of the way And trust me, I do a lot of coloring with Stampin' Blends than I ever did with any other marker. I just thought I would use this pen um, tip to kind of show you coloring with that as well. I just find it easier. Um, and like I said, I don't really feel like I'm that much of an artist, so I still color with these because I just find the color to be so saturated and yummy. So you can kind of see like where I use the one tip versus the other. And that's just because um, the one tip I like glanced over and the other one like I really like scrubbed at because it's the smaller tip. When it starts to get weak on the marker tip, that's another good point. You definitely want to st um, want to store all of your markers on their sides so that the ink is not going to one end or the other. Now, if it gets towards the bottom of the marker and you always use the marker tip, then by all means, stand it like this and try to get that last bit of, of the ink out of it. Um, I've definitely done that with Stampin' Blends as well as Stampin' Write markers. I'm like, this marker is about to die. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on its end to try to get the last bit of color out of it. 
So just to go over some of that line right there, I'm just gonna take the marker tip and go over it a little bit more. One of the other things with the Stampin' Blends is the more times you go over it, the darker it gets. So like if you're like, oh, I missed a spot and you go over like a whole section, but then you didn't go over the rest of it, like see how it's darker on this side? And like I could still keep going. And then this is gonna be lighter because it's almost like coats of paint. You put on one coat of paint and you put on a second coat of paint and it's gonna look a little bit darker. So now I wanna show you with this one a little bit of blending. And again, I am not a professional at this whatsoever. And I do think that it takes a little bit more of an artistic eye that I do not have. Um, and it also takes a little bit of um, guts. <laughs> Like you sometimes just need to wing it and it looks amazing and you didn't think it would. So what I usually do whenever I blend is I use my darker marker first and I go over the lines that Stampin' Up! provides for me. I feel like they know what they're doing. I do not. So I'm just going to go over those lines. I have a hard time coloring and talking at the same time. So these are all like the fold lines with the dark marker. Yes, like whenever the marker tip starts to get like squishy because you press too hard on it or something um then yeah it's like it's almost like feathery and you have like no control it starts like putting ink down over here and you're like no i wanted it right here but anyway so yes i do know what you mean on that casey so i did all of the dark and then i go over it with the light I typically go in like a circular pattern and I go over the dark and over everything. So I wanna color in the whole flower with the light marker, but I also wanna go over those dark lines so that they stay dark, but that they don't look like this, like so pronounced and streaky. And then one of the other things that I will also say about blending is color and walk away and then come back. And maybe not necessarily walk away, but don't sit there and just keep going at it in one spot. Kind of like move to another spot, aka walk away, and then come back to it and see if it needs more. Because with the alcohol, it's blending and bleeding together for a while like it's not like instantaneous so sometimes it kind of needs that blend and bleed and it needs a little bit of time to do that there's even been times though that I've been like I colored that and it looks awful and I have literally walked away and come back maybe an hour later and like glanced over and been like that's the most gorgeous thing ever is that something I created so now it's all blended and you can see how it's got those darker segments, whereas this one just looks solid. So see how it's got those darker lines and it has a little bit more texture and dimension to it. So this one looks more solid. And it's weird, okay, so the other thing, I was gonna say it looks weird that the one um, looks so much lighter. Don't forget, this one was stamped in basic gray. And this one was stamped in, um, in the memento black. So of course it's gonna look a little bit bolder, but this one's all one color and then this one's got those variations of color. And then this is where I say you should be bold and move and add more to it. And 
and I really, really, really struggle with this. But here I have balmy blue, light balmy blue. And you can always color one of those like little, I don't know, like shadowy things around it. I will say this marker is about to die on me and it's actually busted. The, um, the pen cap has busted out. So the fact that it's actually still alive, I'm very excited. So I'm kind of boxing this out like it's going to be a cut piece of cardstock. And that looks very sloppy. So I'm just going to kind of come back through and clean it up a little bit. This one, the tip is, like Casey said, it's a little bit scragglier. And then, you know, if you had your cut piece of card stock. And I could have even left like some white around it to really make it have that dimension. And that's where I'm saying you almost like you need to be bold and you need to go for it. Or you could always do like if you did um, one of these, you could always do this and extend it out a little farther to make it look like a shadow or even do like shadows of the people like going up. And again, I'm not an artist and this scares the bejesus out of me. So... Bear with me. I'm just going to stamp it right over that, even with the, the head being there. But if I took, like, let's see, this is dark crumb cake. Let's go light crumb cake, just to be sure. And almost did like a shadow. And maybe this is completely wrong. But like see how it's like their shadow on the ground? And like I said, I... I think maybe that one might be correct or it might be need to be angled more. And that's where I'm not an artist whatsoever. I need to copy somebody else and say, where does the, like, where does the vase go? Like, is there a shadow over here from the vase? I don't know. Um, there's also a lot more color options with the Stampin' Blends for skin tone colors. So there's an ivory, a crumb cake, um, a bronze grays, blacks, like there's lots of different colors so that you can do different skin tones and different hair colors too. Um, and again, like with this one, I would, here, we'll use the green just to be different. I would take the dark and just go on these lines of the dress like that, and then fill in with the light. And you can even go back in and add those, um, those lines back if you feel like they faded too much and you want them to, um, to stand out a little bit more.
So you can see those lines are a little bit more creased. And again, like I said, you could always go back in and add a little bit more definition to them. And apparently we have an artist in here because he is jumping around like crazy right now. So you can really play with those and get more and more. And like I said, I don't feel like I'm an artist whatsoever, but I feel like just by following the lines that Stampin' Up! gives us with the stamps, um, I do feel like a little bit of an artist and it makes me feel like so excited. Um, and so then I'm like, I feel like Stampin' Blends are like the magical thing to use um, for coloring and, um, and I love them. But yeah, they... Uh, they can have a little bit of a learning curve to them. Uh, do I think they're difficult? Like, no, because I feel like I can do it. Like, I can't get this kind of shading and shadowing with, you know, one of the other tools. So I feel like they're easier. Um, but again, that's kind of personal preference and what comes easier to you or how comfortable you feel with that shadowing and things like that. Um, one of the other things about the um, Stampin' Blends is because it's alcohol, like if you're really going crazy with some cardstock, you know how sometimes it can like start to deteriorate the cardstock and it rolls off like little like pieces because the layers of the cardstock are getting so saturated. That's not the case with the alcohol markers because the alcohol, um, you know, it pretty much instantaneously um, dries up. Now, if you stay in one single spot and keep going and going and going and going, you are going to end up with having that problem. Uh, and that's where I kind of say you need to like move away and then come back. And maybe you'll like it as is, or maybe it needs a few tweaking, you know, here and there and stuff like that. But you can then do that at, a, at like a time after it has had a chance to blend and meld and everything together. So I hope this was um, a good tutorial for you guys uh, so that you could learn about all the different coloring techniques and see, you know, which ones you like, which ones might have a, um, a tip or trick that you weren't aware of or which ones you maybe want to try out and, and start playing with. I will say that I use Stampin' Blends the most. Um, I hardly ever use my Stampin' Write markers anymore. And I still use my blender pens and my aqua painters here and there, especially for different techniques and stuff. And then, like I said, I use the um, the water painters slash aqua painters. That's what they used to be called. So aqua water doesn't matter. Um, I use that for sealing envelopes. So I use that all the time, especially now uh, with Christmas cards and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions on any of these, let me know in the comments below. And, um, and I can do a different video on it or I can answer that question. Um, I do, like I'm not a huge coloring fan uh, because I kind of get bored with it. Uh, but I do think that it can really be magical with different um, images and things like that. So it can be super fun. And some people find it to be really relaxing. So if that's you, then these are the tools for you. But yeah, definitely reach out if you have any questions on anything. Don't forget about the virtual Stampin' Bingo on December 18th. Again, sign up is going to end on December 9th. Um, and packets are going to start being mailed out on the 7th. So there's still time to get signed up, but we are coming to a close on the sign up for it. So definitely get signed up sooner rather than later so that the spots don't get full and so that you get your supplies in time uh, to play Stampin' Bingo. There's a link in the description box below so you can check that out there. If you have any questions, just reach out. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and happy stamping. Bye-bye.